Growing up, when did art begin to matter to you? I really didn't um, know much about, you know, art or the process of expressing oneself creatively. But one day I was in second grade and I went to after school daycare, right? And there was a rock painting contest. And so we were told to go get a rock and, and paint the rock. So I got a rock and I took the rock home and I just looked at it. And then the next day I went out and got some paint with my grandma and I painted this rock. And um, I turned it into the rock painting competition and I won. <laughs> And um, I think I um, grew up in a really dysfunctional home, right? Where it wasn't common to be praised. You know, it wasn't commonplace to um, be applauded for something. And when I won and I got called up, everyone was clapping. I'm like, what is, what is this? Why are, they, why are all these people staring at me and why are they clapping? And I realized that, oh, people like art. <laughs> people like art. And then the next year, um, there was an origami contest at the public library. And I entered that. And I did an origami sculpture of six ducks. And I won. And when they announced me as the winner, I went up again. And the same thing, people were clapping and smiling. And I'm saying to myself, why are people looking at me? Why are people smiling? Why are people clapping? And I wrote, oh, people like art. <laughs> and that's when I, when I began to understand how much joy art can bring to other people and also to the artist, him, him or herself. So that's when I discovered art. Oh, can I share one more story? Yeah, please sure. do. So, um, as I mentioned, I, I come from a very non-traditional uh, family, kind of dysfunctional and people it was a very fractured family, and I really feel like art saved me. Art was my therapy. So, um, and it was challenging for me to find connection with my mother. And uh, one day I came home, uh, it was in fourth grade, and there is my mom sitting on the porch with this hippie artist. This is like um, late 70s, right? And, um, there's like maybe 50 to 60 paintings on the front lawn against the walls. And my mom looked really happy to be sitting on, in the shade on our porch with this hippie artist with all this beautiful artwork. And then I realized this is, so I've had three turning points about art. The first one was the rock painting competition. The second one was the origami. And the third one was I've never seen my mother look so happy. She really likes art. And my mother was prone to, um, I'll just say it, my mother was prone to depression, okay? And um, she had a lot of strife in her life and she wasn't the happiest person. But when I saw her with these 50 or 60 pieces of art and this artist, she looked complete to me. And I think maybe one of the reasons why I really continue to engage in the art is because I know my mother likes art. And I never quite felt, you know, the mother-son thing. It just was never quite complete for me. And maybe that's, maybe part of my reason for pursuing the arts is because of my own mama trauma, which I, which I own. But it's, it's, it's part of my journey. I don't feel like a victim. So those are the three kind of turning points for me about art and what art means to the artist and to those around him or her. The other thing is, I never put those three things together before. Oh, wow. Until the rock right and the origami and my mother until I got here because you helped me arrive to that place. Oh, wow. See, that's part oh, of okay. your collective that gift that you yeah. can create that space for people to really think openly with that fear of judgment. Because oh, I never, I never talked about art. I've never been asked that question and I never thought of it in that way. So thank you. 
Wow, I thought that was like a story of yours that you knew. I've never told that before. I've never even put those dots together. Wow. So I just had a follow up with it. I, I just wanted to. Oh, okay. You're, you're rolling. Oh, okay. Um, did you ever find out who the artist was? Like who's like it was this person with the long hair? His. No, I um, all I know is his first name was Sam. I asked my mother about it um, at Christmas two years ago. She um, recalls that afternoon when I came home from school. And for some reason, my other brothers and sisters didn't come home that day. It was just me. So, uh, but I don't know who the artist was, but she did buy two pieces of art. One was um, a sun, an image of a sun, but the sun was stretched and it was sort of um, vertically integrated. And of course, me, you know, being kind of love starved, I was thinking, well, maybe she got the sun because I'm the sun. I don't know if that's true. Maybe that's just wishful, wish fantasy. Um, and the other one was um, an image of a boat on a very calm lake. And um, I thought it was interesting that she placed the the painting of the sun very close to my room. And then the image of the lone boat on the empty lake she put in her bedroom because she often told me that she felt like, you know, that song, Simon and Garfunkel, I'm a rock or I am an island. What is yeah, it? I think yeah, so. Yeah, she, I think that painting was about her need for solitude and, and being alone, but those, they're still up in the house, those two paintings. And I always oh, look at them and have a recall about the moment when my mom was with the artist and when she bought them. So I think maybe in that moment, you know, critically thinking about my mother's choices, the son and the boat. I also think the boat may have had to do with her father, who was, a, 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 who was into sailing. Um, I think I started engaging in critical thinking about art that's visual you know so i think my mom my mom really did like artist and she was a little bit easier on me at times when i would excel in the arts you know oscar wilde says that um everyone is afraid of their mother that's what oscar wilde said and in, in some sense I, I think that's true but um, I'm going through a phase of my life where my mother and I are talking more openly about things and we're finally um, s common stepping stones upon which we can stand on together and find reconciliation and find understanding. Because I think on our journey, um, we struggle to find connection with others. We struggle to, to love, but we also struggle to be loved by the people that should love us, right? And it's an it's an ongoing it's an ongoing thing. But I think the three moments I talked about actually inform my filmmaking proclivities. If that makes sense. Do you remember one of the first films that you saw that really uh, kind of hooked you in for your love of movies? <sighs> you know. Um, I watched Oliver Twist. I don't like musicals at all. Like I think, oh, who stops in the middle of preparing a sandwich to sing a song? It's like, I have no patience for musicals, but Oliver. So when I grew up, um, we, we didn't always, we didn't always have enough to eat. Um, but well, well, we did, we did, but you know, we didn't have carton milk. We had instant milk and my grandmother would bring us, you know, government cheese. Um, my father was very proud and he refused to accept any form of welfare. Like we qualified for the school lunch tickets. And my, my dad said, no, no, we're not. We're not. Said, dad, why dad? Why not? No, we're not taking money. We don't need it. So I was hungry a lot as a child. And, you know, my mother and my father had four kids, um, did not have their college educations. My father had a job. My mother focused on, you know, being a mother and raising us. But um, I related to Oliver because he was an orphan. He had no family, right? I had a family, but I felt like I was detached from them. And 
he, he was hungry for food and for love. And I found a really deep connection with Oliver Twist, especially when he goes up and says, please, sir, I want more. And they said, more? How dare you ask for more food? You're an orphan in this orphanage. And I watched the film over and over again, and I started acting out scenes um, with my twin brother, my little brother, and I started taking photos. I didn't have a video camera. And I think that film, just my connection with the protagonist and his journey to find love and acceptance and a sense of belonging, you know, his need for food was really um, one thing, but the deeper need was to be loved and feel accepted. That inspired me to be a filmmaker. I started making films, but they just were with cameras, you know, camera stills, but I'd piece the photos together and I wrote down what was going on. So I started storyboarding at the age of nine because I saw Oliver Twist. 